So today we're doing lesson five of the division of fractions module. And the students today were taught why the algorithm method works and they were kind of shown how to do it. So one example we went through in class, there are four cakes at the party. The cook cut the cake into fifths and then wanted to put two fifths of the cakes onto the tables at the party. How many tables were at the party? So I tried to get them to think of a couple different ways. Okay, the first thing, they need to know that the question being asked is four divided by two fifths. Okay, one me method they worked on was taking four and actually dividing it by two of the five boxes. Okay, that would give them an answer of ten tables. Okay. However, this method doesn't let them see why um, there is a rule to dividing fractions. So I had them draw another model today. I had them draw four boxes. And if we are taking four hol holes and dividing it into fifths, two fifth pieces, the students have to start by taking their holes and breaking it into fifths. That gives us a total of 20 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So they really just did 4 times 5. Okay? Now they need, they need to see how many groups of 2 fifths fit into 4. So they should have circled groups of 2 fifths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10 is the answer with our visual model. And I hope they can realize that they can rewrite this as a multiplication question. They can take 4, they can times it by 5, and then take that answer and divide it by 2. And I hope they see the relationship, okay? This is the rule. They can keep the number they're dividing. They can change division to multiplication. And they can flip the second fraction, which they were taught that the word is the reciprocal. Okay, and if they actually did that, mo sorry about that interruption. So they can write four. A whole number always has a one underneath it. Four over one times five over two. Numerators times numerators is 20, denominators times denominators 2, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. We also took time in class today just to show a different method. Um, we, we use common denominators to check this. Um, they can take 4 over 1 and scale it up to 20 over 5. Really, 20 divided by 5 is the same as 4 over 1. Okay, just looks a little different, but they are equivalent. <coughs> and once the denominators of fractions are the same, the students were instructed to divide the numerators. Now you might be asking yourself, why are you taking so much time to show the kids more than one way? Well, some kids might see this. Some kids might like this, and some kids might like this. So I'm going to show you all three options so you can pick which one you choose, which one you're the most comfortable with. Okay. Um, the, students, the students were then taught about the word reciprocal, which is the inverse of a fraction or the opposite. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you're always going to get one. So for example, the number two-fifths, I had all the students write this down. It's reciprocal or it's inverse is it's opposite. So it's really, it's reciprocal is five over two. If you take a number and multiply it by its reciprocal, you always get one. Two times five is 10, five times two is 10, 10 divided by 10 is one whole. I asked my students then what the reciprocal of a whole number is. And I have some of my students here. Who can tell me what the reciprocal of six is? Ian, what's under 6, guys? 1. So what's the reciprocal of 6 over 1? Gavin? Yeah, the reciprocal of a whole number is that number with 1 underneath, that number underneath 1. 
6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 1 is 6, 6 divided by 6 is the reciprocal. It gives you, multiplying by the reciprocal gives you 1. And then the students and I just went through a table, and I'll do the first row with you. I wanted them to be given a division problem, 2 thirds divided by a 6. I wanted them to practice multiplying by the reciprocal, which we also talked about keeping the first fraction, changing the division to multiplication, and flipping the second fraction. So they would do this by keeping the first fraction the same. It's always kept the same because that's what you're dividing. You switch division to multiplication, and you take the reciprocal of the second fraction, which is a fancy word for flipping it. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3. 12 divided by 3 gives you an answer of 4. I also, just to be a stickler, had the students use common denominators just to check if they would get the same answer. In this instance, the common denominator would be 6, so I scaled 2 thirds up, times 2, times 2. So this would be rewritten as 4 6 divided by 1 6. Once the denominators of fractions are the same, we can just divide the numerators, and 4 divided by 1 is 4. Same answer, two different ways. And I hope you enjoyed seeing how many different ways we're dividing fractions in Mrs. Kramer's math class.